morning, green afternoon, green evening. Hearty welcome to all our brothers and sisters across the globe in different countries, in different continents, in different time zones, in different wellness and health conditions. And we pray to Almighty that you all should take care of yourself and you should stay fit, you should stay fine. Everything should be wonderful. Take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of your neighbors, take care of your community, take care of everybody you are associated with, whosoever comes in contact, whosoever is meeting you, greeting you, just take care of them the best possible way. That's the purpose of life and that's the way the human being should be because the whole world is one family. And that's why the term is being used called Vasudev Kutumbakam. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this evening, we extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Uh, Ka uh, Ka Kagambe uh, Nathen, who is the managing director, A Promise, who is joining us from beautiful northeast part of India. We extend him a very, very warm welcome. It's a pleasure to have him. Today's 1077th webinar during this pandemic, right from 25th of March, 2020, when the lockdown was declared, we started organizing and we decided we would try and do the handholding of all teachers, all youth, all principals, all headmasters, all counselors, and everybody who is directly, indirectly associated with the education ecosystem, we would try and get in touch with them like doctors, nurses, paramedical people. They are doing great job towards the medical and the wellness side. We will take on the EdTech platform and that's basically education ecosystem empowerment. Today we are having peak performance deliberation and empowering our entire Northeast youth so all boys and girls, teachers, educators, those are joining us, those are from education ecosystem. And of course, others, maybe parents, maybe friends, maybe others, those are joining. We wish to share with you that there are 31 million Indians abroad. And these 31 million Indians, when I talk about, they are the one. Those are settled in different countries. Our chamber is in touch with 149 countries where we have got our network world over and we are basically for joint research, joint collaboration, a lot of events together, a lot of deliberations together, a lot of collaborations together. Basic aim and objective is how to empower the service industry because ICSI is focusing on international chamber for service industry. And economy has got three parts, agriculture, manufacturing, and services. Agriculture and manufacturing also need a support of services. And education is also ecosystem of services. So welcome to beautiful Northeast part of India. It's a wonderful, wonderful region. Ashta Lakshmi, when you talk about, and what a beautiful people, the art, craft, culture, cuisine, dances, music, costumes, whatever you talk about. And ladies and gentlemen, today, Mirabai Chanu, she becomes the first Indian weightlifter to win silver in Tokyo Olympic today on 24th of July. Heartiest congratulations to every Indian and very special, our children and our families, those are in Northeast part of India. Now, this particular series is India-ASEAN joint collaborations. And what we basically talk over here and we take on over here is how we can take care of as far as all the eight states as an integrated approach. And when you want to enter the Southeast Asia or ASEAN, you go via Manipur and you travel via Manipur, you come to Moray and from there you enter Myanmar. Then, of course, Cambodia, Laos, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, Brunei, all the 10 countries what we have got over there. Right from 2014 onward, our chamber had been deeply working in the northeast part of India. And we have been organizing various programs like we had uh, a great deliberations where the Honorable Chief Minister of Manipur, it was services exports 
tapping the potential of services sector catering to the domestic and international demand from the northeast part of india similar way we took united nation all the way to dimapur like we had a program in imphal that is in manipur then presently you must be very happy that imphal airport is also having a lot of expansion cargo additional flights conveyor belts everything is coming up similar way when advantage assam was held before that we had been working very hard on guwahati airport and our efforts were that if there is an expansion at guwahati airport wonders can be done because accessibility to the region is very very important and then of course we had another program that was cambodia laos myanmar and vietnam and that was business summit which was held again for the northeast and there was a asean study center which was a decision by the ministry of external affair that it should be opened in the campus of uh, nehu but uh, in the nehu campus there is a separate uh, you know the icc uh, icssr center over there the asean study center was opened the other day we discussed with the uh, manipur uh, vice chancellor manipur university vice chancellor and i think the most strategic and the appropriate location is that this particular center if it comes up and it gets shifted because shillong is on one side but if we have to enter asean then we have to go via manipur and i think manipur university holds a strategic location and there if we have it i think a lot can be done from there we also had uh, cinematic tourism conference in mumbai and that was done with the ministry of commerce and industries government of india where we took all the northeastern states together focus was cinematic tourism and here you can see and all the people from northeast and uh, asean countries together on a common platform in mumbai with bollywood where we had now what is the need of the r at present is today with the education we got to combine skills and we got to empower our youth the best possible way and all the time our chamber keeps taking up this at various levels why music dance games happiness humor fun creativity curiosity storytelling and of course other areas what you talk about where the talent of the children can be taken out are not the integral part of education ecosystem so ladies and gentlemen when we talk about it let's talk about the opportunities what exists for our northeast youth the wonderful children education to be skill education to be linked with the skills skills to be linked with entrepreneurship entrepreneurship to be linked with startups they all got to come together because our youth they are our assets and they are the future that's why our chamber during this pandemic we are focusing on teacher and youth empowerment we are organizing almost 28 webinars per week that you can well imagine we have taken all aspects and you know tourism holds a great great potential when you go to loktak lake you know where you have got a floating island in manipur when you go to the place where subhash chandra bose ji he basically hosted the flag for the first time for india's independence when you go further to more you go to couple of other places you enter asean and similar way all other states in northeast they have got a tremendous potential so why not domestic tourism wellness tourism herbal tourism cinematic tourism spiritual tourism eco tourism rural tourism agri tourism village tourism youth tourism sports tourism buddhist pilgrimage tourism heritage tourism border tourism couple of other things which can be done over there so there are a couple of programs which we can take care of we can work it out today is saturday and that's at 8 pm tomorrow morning we will be taking you to united states where we will be talking about uh, the education and the onward journey what is to be done that's from the woodbury university california tomorrow at 11:30 we will talk about cinematic tourism and then tomorrow evening we'll talk about msme service industry and then thereafter ladies and gentlemen in the evening at 8 pm we will talk about the education further on the you know marketing strategies and uh, during this particular pandemic all the research which our chamber has done 
where B2B, we, we, we call it now, it's no more business to business. You should term it and you should recoin it like back to basics. That means for some time you got to hold your horses, basic food, basic wellness, basic education. And in education, every child should have earn and learn. So let's get together. What show a human mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. And I'm pretty sure all of us together, if we are together, we can achieve a lot. So let's extend a very warm welcome this uh, evening to Mr. Uh, Kagambya uh, Nagatem, uh, MD, a promise. He has worked in a multinational companies like Tata Consultancy Services. He was also a part of the project of launching iPhone 6 in Australia. He has also worked at Urban Clap in Operation Department, one of the fastest growing startup companies in India. He has served as a trainer in one of the best sales company in Asia, Save the Children. With a sole purpose and intention to empower the youth of India, a promise which was found by you know, Mr. Chinglemba and Mr. Kagemba in the year 2017. A Promise has done trainings with the best leaders of the world. And through their collaboration, they have organized many events, both national and international, and still many projects to come. Wow, what a pleasure. So join me in extending a very warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, this evening. Mr. Kagamba, who is going to share his vision with all of us. Hearty welcome. Pleasure to have you with us. Nothing could have been better. Nothing could have been more pious. Every year there is a celebration where the teacher and the student, they get together with each other. And that's called Guru Purnima. This is a great celebration. Basically, you know, the Maites, and for that matter, the other communities, they understand it so well. And uh, teacher and student relationship and that particular celebration, when you talk about, that's called Guru Purnima. And that celebration is on in India since yesterday morning and it's going on. And now overseas, wherever the Indians are, 31 million, they're also celebrating this. So with these words, uh, we extend a very hearty welcome to Mr. Kagemba and we take our discussions and deliberations further. Hearty welcome. Pleasure to have you with us. And let's Pleasure. move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Pleasure to be a part of this amazing, empowering session. Thank you so much, sir, for inviting me. Hello, world. A very good evening from the Northeast. It's, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this uh, empowering session once again. So yeah, my name is Nathim Kagemba and I'm from Manipur. And uh, uh, yeah, like my, to tell you a brief about my profile, I've worked in TCS, I'm privileged enough to work in a multinational company. And then I worked in Urban Clap. It, it is one of the fastest growing startup companies and I've learned a lot from, you know, from my experience over there. And I've worked as a sales trainer and saved the children. So uh, it's a, it is an amazing experience that I got from outside. And uh, with an intention, with a sole purpose to empower and motivate the youths of Manipur as well. And also uh, India and also the world. Uh, along with my brother, uh, we founded A Promise. I am a twin. And uh, uh, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> I'm a twin. Nathim Chinglemba is my elder brother. He's in Bangalore right now. And so, uh, yeah, we founded A Promise in 2017. And we wanted to equip the youths. We, uh, basically, it's about sharing what we have learned. It's not that I'm much better. It's basically about sharing what I've learned from my experiences outside and how can we help one another uh, to empower and, you know, uh, you know, make the best out of what we have. So I do a lot of, I've done a lot of training programs uh, for private as well as uh, government, government organizations as well. And what I do is uh, basically it's about, uh, you know, skill. How do, I mean, like skill is something very important. As sir, you have said that, uh, you know, in India, 
it seems to be like skill is not much given importance. You know, that is what, but the e Elon Musk, the billionaire, the richest man on earth has tweeted, <laughs> skill matter more than degrees. <laughs> so yeah, I do understand knowledge do matter, but when it, when it, you know, when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, life, I feel like, you know, what's going to get us ahead is skill. So there are so many skills, so many skills, if we learn them, would help us get ahead in life. There are this entrepreneurship skills, so many skills are there. I mean, like right now in Manipur, as of now, I understand and I do acknowledge the fact that the government is trying its very best to make sure the state is going forward and I support them. And despite the effort, what we can still see is that there's a lot, lot of unemployment issues going on in the state. Lots of unemployment issues going on in the state. So uh, 2000 by 2011 census, I think it was probably around seven lakhs, but now it's 2021, another addition of 11 to 12 years, I believe, you know, I guess another 10, 10 lakhs, maybe, possibly, or maybe more than that. So right now, I mean, like the launch of the startup Manipur, you know, the government understanding the scenario of Manipur right now have also initiated startup Manipur where we started funding entrepreneurs, uh, giving them capital investment so they, they can start on their own. And not only just to provide job for themselves, but for the, for the people of, uh, you know, Manipur as well. And, you know, that, that is what. So, yeah, what I do is performance training. What I do is performance training. I'm not from a very rich family. I'm not from a very rich background, but I have a hunger and a passion towards growth. I want to make the best out of life, do whatever I can. I, also, I was also writing the same thing, sir, when I was sending you the, uh, this one, uh, my profile. I was, writing, I, was, I was writing it down. Whatever your mind can conceive and believe you can achieve. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a strong believer of that as well. So I, I believe in making things happen. I believe in making things happen that you have to come out of your comfort and make it happen. So right now with the coming of, you know, this Corona and lockdown, it has affected so many business and lives of so many people, not only just Northeast and Manipur, but across the globe. So it is very important now that I feel that we, you know, we maintain that spirit that we were born with and to continue move on with the spirit and, you know, uh, achieve, what we, are, what we were destined to achieve. I think that is something very important. And, you know, uh, because of this corona, what happens is we are not allowed to go here and there because it spreads through contact. So, so, so uh, uh, you know, transportation, you know, uh, uh, moving is actually restricted. So, we, so, so now what I believe is we as a human being, I know we find this excitement, energy, and motivation through movement. If there is no movement, there is no life, right? There is no movement, there is no life. So, with the thank you so much, sir. With the coming of this Corona, I mean, like everything is made to stop. We are we are not made to travel. We are not even made to come out of our own house. And, you know, so I understand there are so many limitations that has been imposed upon us now because of the scenario, because of the situation. So what I feel right now is, you know, God give the hardest battle to the toughest soldiers. This is what I believe. God gives the hardest battle to the toughest soldiers. This is what I believe. So I feel like this is a test for us. It's a test for us. And the most inspiring people in the world the most inspiring people in the world uh, have overcome such adversity and that's why they're so in inspiring. If it was so easy for them, it was, was so, I mean, like it could just, if it could just happen at the snap of a finger, I think they would not have inspired like they have sp inspired millions and billions. So I believe like, you know, this is a test right now. And, you know, so, the, the, the primary concern now is how do we stay motivated? How do we utilize this as an opportunity to move forward, to move ahead? How can you use this as 
use this experience as a way to empower, motivate, and even grow stronger, come back stronger, 10 times stronger. I believe this is why it's happening. I do understand the losses. I do understand what's going on because of Corona, because of this, uh, you know, virus. But this is a test. This is what I and yeah. So the bravest soldiers are given the hardest battles. So what are some of the ways? What are some of the ways how we can stay active? How we can stay motivated? And you know because. That, because, because that is what's going to decide how our future is going to be. That's what's going to decide how our future is going to be. It's the way how we are, how emotionally and mentally fit we are right now. During the times of this crisis, it's going to decide how we're going to do after this crisis. It's, it's, it's how, so what, what are the ways? Some of the ways, what I believe is right now, what I, what I have, I have I, most of my learnings came uh, by self-study. And I've been also, I've also been in some training programs as well. I strongly believe that emotions, the right emotions, positivity, is the key to success, is the key to performance. So how do we stay positive? How do we perform during these tough times? And one of the ways is emotion comes from motion. This is what I believe. Emotion comes from motion. And we have to move. We have to move after such a long period of shutdown and lockdown, it seems like, you know, we are getting used to this, uh, you know, we're, we're getting used to this thing. We're not moving anymore. There's no movement. There's a very less movement. And if there's less movement, emotion is nothing but energy in motion, right? What's going to help us get ahead and go forward is energy. If there's a lack of energy, we will not be willing to do the things ahead. And energy is emotion in motion, right? So what, so what we have to do is in order to create those positive emotions, what we need to do is it's very simple. The definition says itself, we have to move. Move, emotion comes from motion. So one of the most important things right now, even though, even though there are so many limitations, what we can do is we have got to make a decision to exercise, move ourselves. That's, that's what we need right now. And make this consistent and regular. You know, make it consistent and regular. This is what is very important. Because to be honest, if I would ask the audience one question, Let's say somebody, let's give a rating on the energy scale. If somebody is at one, energy level one, one to 10, if 10 is something like he's so excited, energetic, pumped up, ready to rock, take over the world, all right, is that energy number 10? And let's say somebody is at energy number one or number three. See, who will do better in life? Let's say there is a dancing competition. There is, uh, you know, a seminar uh, you have to give. Will you do better when you're at energy high, energy number 10, or will you do better when you're at energy number three? Will you read better if you're at high level of energy than if you're at less level of energy? Will your relationship, will you treat your people better if you are at a higher level of energy than at a lower level of energy? Everything. Will your business, do you think you will be a better leader if you have a higher level of energy or when you have a lower level of energy? Do you think like you will treat your teammates better if you have a higher level of energy or a lower level of energy? Do you, what do you think, your productivity? What about your productivity? Will your productivity be, be better if you're at a high level of energy or if you are at a lower level of energy? So everything here is about energy. And energy, right, energy is, right, it's the energy in motion. Emotion is energy in motion and it comes from motion. When we sit for a long time, what happens is, and everything, we are in a state called a passive state. We're in a state called a passive state, and that's the killer of the dreams. Why most people do not take actions is not because of a lack of resources, but because of lack of resourcefulness. So we have to stay resourceful because we have to understand that success is our duty, that we have to go out and get it and make it happen and make success our duty. And it depends on us. 
So it is important for us to stay resourceful. And one of the ways to stay resourceful is to you know, move, very simple. It's very simple, move, moving, trying a new way, a, a, a new pattern of using the body, a new pattern of using the body. That's what we need to do. So movement, emotion comes from motion. So, I mean, like even the thinking, the thinking, the, the mind, the mind depends on the body. The mind depends on the body. How you use your body, that's how your mind is going to be. Whether you are, you know, happy, excited, energetic, or whether you're frustrated, angry, pissed off, etc. I'm sorry, but what? <laughs> I'm sorry for that word. <laughs> See, whatever you're feeling, it depends on how you use the body, right? It is, uh, I mean, I'm so happy to be a part of this empowering session. And it is during this Corona times where uh, Sir Gulshan is, uh, uh, you know, initiating this uh, live sessions. It is during this Corona because Sir is very resourceful right now and the team behind, behind. So my pleasure, sir, my pleasure. So, I mean, like, it's, it's a matter of resourcefulness. That's what I believe. It's not a lack of resources, but a lack of resourcefulness. This is what I believe. So it is important, and we should make it a number one priority uh, to stay resourceful. And one of the easy, see, the, the power of simplicity is that, it, you know, it is just so, I mean, like, you can just use it right there. So, I mean, like, simplicity makes it very effective. And one of the most simple and the most effective ways how we use the body, the way you sit, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you use your facial expressions. We have possibly the scientists have discovered that we have probably around 4,000 emotions. We have discovered around 4,000 emotions, right? Of which a human being on an average uses around plus to minus 12 emotions of which even half of it is negative. Right, so even half of it is negative, right? So, so it's all a matter of, I believe, it's all a matter of what state of body and mind you're in. The opportunity is already out there. The opportunity is already out there. It's all a matter of how you're using your body, how, what state of mind and body you're in. So one thing I would say is move, move your body, try new ways, right? Yeah. Walk a bit faster. Talk a bit, you know, uh, 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 talk a bit, uh, you know, with more energy. Talk with more energy and more excitement. Yeah, I'll put it that way. So one thing is use the body well, right? Because the body controls the mind as well. And, and uh, the other thing I would like to talk about is the way we focus. It's the way how we, how we focus, Right. It's the way how we focus. It's the way how we use the mind. This is something that controls our state of being, our state of mind, and our resourcefulness or our motivation. The thing about motivation, it, it never comes at the right time. The thing about motivation is that it never comes at the right time. This is what happens. So, you know what? We need to train ourselves. We need to train ourselves every day. And so, uh, regarding the mindset, regarding this mindset, since we have a very short period of time, I use, I, when I do my training, it's probably around uh, three months or like 12 days, <laughs> all right? I have to sum it all up and, you know, give it out in points so that, and make it simple so that, some, you know, at least if you can use something, grab something out of this, not simply just, an, you know, just a YouTube talk show, but simply as something if you can use it in your daily life practically right now to take your life to the next level. And, 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 and the other thing is how we use the mind, how we use the mind. It's, and so here's the thing. What you focus is what you feel. What you focus is what you feel. Your focus equals your reality. Your focus equals your reality and what you focus is what you feel. So it is very important. So since we are not allowed to move here and there, right? Go out, job, exercise, curfew and all. So we're limited, <laughs> but we're not limited. But if we focus on the things that we're limited, we will stay limited. If we focus on the things that we're limited, we'll stay limited. So what, we, what I believe is the questions that you ask yourself is very important. The questions that we ask ourselves is very important. It's very crucial. It's very critical. And it is very important. That's what I feel. So now if I've been sitting this way, 
I've been sitting this way. Now what I need to do is I need to straighten up a bit, smile a little more, get more excited, get more energetic. I just change my physiology, the way I use my body, my face, and see the energy is going up and I can see a lot of smile from Sir Gulshan more and more. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm just loving it. So, so it's the way how we use the body. It's the way how we use the body. It's the way how we use the mind that will keep us resourceful. And one of the most important things is, yeah, the questions we ask ourselves determines what state of mind and body we are going to be, right? What state of mind and body we are going to be. It is determined the questions that we ask ourselves, whether we are conscious or unconscious, whether we are conscious of it or unconscious of it is the questions we ask ourselves. I feel uh, that carries a lot of power. That carries a lot of power. So we, right now, you know, I understand the scenario, the situation, and because of this, people, so many people are getting a lot of, you know, a lot of, lot of frustrations, disappointments. They cannot work anymore. They cannot earn money anymore. And, you know, why does this happen to me? I have to pay bills for my family. I have to, I have to you know, the, the bills are stacking up and all those things. And sometimes, you know, we thought, you know, it's finally going to get over because I feel like it's been so long, but then boom, the curfew comes in, right? <laughs> in Manipur right now, and maybe in some other states as well. But uh, to all the people who's watching, during this uh, critical situation, what is really important is to be aware of the questions that we're asking ourselves because the questions are the answer. And sometimes we get carried away so easily. Sometimes we get carried away so easily, we become unaware, we become unconscious of the questions that we're asking ourselves. And if that emotional pattern, if that asking and answering negatively, if the asking and answering negatively, if that goes on for an extended period of time, it affects the mindset and the personality of the individual. So some of if if so here's if if you want to turn a problem into an opportunity, the way to make problems disappear, the way to make problems disappear is to convert it into a gift, is to convert the problem into a gift, is to convert the problem into an opportunity. The moment we do that, the moment we do that, the problem will disappear. The problem disappears because it's the problem. It's in the mind. It's in the mind. Where it is, it's in the mind. We have seen so many successful people going through a lot of overcoming a lot of adversities, problems, obstacles, and inspiring the world. Millions of people, right? It's the perception. It's the perception. I'm not saying that we should ignore the problems, but if we can have the skill to convert the problem into an opportunity, into a gift, then we get empowered. Then it's an opportunity. So how do we do that? And one of the ways is the way how we ask questions to ourselves. So some of the questions are, how, can, how, how is this good for me? How is this good for me? I know it might be really bad, and I know it might be really awful, something really disappointing, but if you keep asking the wrong question to yourself, it's not gonna help you either. It's not gonna help you either. If you wanna solve the problem, you are the one who's gonna solve the problem, so you have to get motivated. So the way how to do this, is we have to ask the right questions. What are the questions that's gonna empower us? What are the questions that's going to motivate us? What's going to, what are the questions that's going to make us resourceful? What are the questions that's going to you know, make us get up and solve the problem? Right? So it's a, again, it comes down to simplicity. Simplicity is so powerful. The questions we ask ourselves. Right? How can this be an opportunity? What is great about this? I love this question. It has got so much power in it. What's great about this? I love it. So when things really go wrong, if you demand it, and I know when things are really frustrating, this, things are really disappointing, and you don't want to even ask that. That is completely out of the picture. You just want to go like, hey, man, 
I mean, like, this is really bad. And you just want to go negative and sad, upset and frustrated. But, but I know one thing in life. It's going to keep happening and it's going to keep coming. And the only solution is to step up. That's what I know. The only solution is to step up in life. That's what I know. Because until and unless we step up, it's going to be right there in front of us, in front of our face. So we need to, I mean, like, like it or not, we have to handle it. We have to deal with it. So the questions you ask yourself, what's great about this? You have to demand that. You have to demand that from yourself. You have to demand that from yourself. Hey, what's great about this? I know I hate this. I know I don't like this. I know I don't want this. But come on, what's great about this? You know, I know it sounds really absurd. And I know, I know, I know what most people are thinking. But that is how the leaders are made. That's going to make us stronger. Struggles are to make us stronger. They are a gift. They're a gift. And what I can really uh, 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 see right now is, you know, regarding this perseverance and persistent emotional and mental fitness, right now, I don't think most of the youths are right now having the right levels of fitness right now, mentally and emotionally. Addicted to mobile phones, social media, not much of exercising. They don't have that staying power anymore. They don't have that persistence power anymore. That's what I feel. It's degrading. And it has been rated the number one quality, you know, as per the Harvard University. The number one most important quality to be successful is persistence. Grit. Grit. That's what they say. If you have grit. There's, a lady, there's a lady called Angela Dix. Okay. There's a lady called Angela Dix. She mm -hmm. has written number of books on grit and mm -hmm. there's a program she has mm -hmm. done. There are more than 40 webinars on the YouTube, mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. to empower the teachers on grit. Yes, please mm -hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. Right, sir. Thank you so much for mentioning. <laughs> so that's what I mean. It's grit. You have to have that staying power. You have to have that persistence, the tenacity to go through, overcome the odds, stay there, stay there for a long. The difference between a winner and a loser is one minute, they say. How long you stay, how, the longer you stay. So I think that's what's missing out right now uh, 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 in our society. I mean, like that persistent power is fading away. So we need to train. I mean, like, that's what, I mean, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you really got to have grit. I mean, you, if, you, if you really want to be an entrepreneur, I, I do respect other professions as well. I'm not saying they're easy, but the thing is being an entrepreneur, I know it took a lot of grit and persistence. <laughs> it took a lot of grit and persistence for me to be at this level. And it's just started. I know there's so much more miles and miles to go before I sleep. And so coming back to that. So one more thing about emotions is that uh, emotion is like a muscle. It's like a muscle. I mean, like we have this identity where we're like, I'm so mentally weak. You know, we have this pre, you know, preconceived notion of ourselves. We have this identity programmed and built from our experiences, through our experiences that I'm weak, I'm shy, I'm this kind of guy. No, it's actually a programming. And we have accepted that programming. And because we're accepting it, it's running. It's running us. The moment we do not tolerate that, the moment we do not accept, the moment we do not believe that, it's gone. It's bye-bye. It's ta-ta. It's over once and for all. <laughs> right? So I feel like emotion is like a muscle. So if you want to have grit, you have to practice grit. If you want to have discipline, you have to practice discipline. If you, if, 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 if you want to be courageous, you have to practice courage. If you want to be more determined, you have to practice determination. That's what, that's what, and that's, that's what I believe in. Emotion is like a, uh, emotion is like a muscle. The more we pr practice it, a particular emotion, the more we get stronger. And the same thing goes with negative emotions. If you practice shyness, if you practice being fearful, if you practice being timid, 
you know, negative, negative emotions, guilty, frustration, anger, excessive anger, it's going to be easy for you. You, you are mastering negative emotions. And on the other hand, if you practice the positive emotions, you're going to master it. Consist, if, you, if you do that consistently, you're going to master positive emotions as well. So it's, it's a matter of choice. But yeah, you have to pay the price, right? You have to pay the price. This is what I believe. You have to pay the price. I know change is hard in the beginning, messy in the middle, and beautiful at the end. This is what they say, <laughs> right? <sir? laughs> Changes are hard in the beginning, messy in the middle, and it's beautiful at the end. So if you want to transform our life, and it, all it needs is a, a real decision, a real decision, right? It's not, it's, just, it's not a feeble decision. It's a, it's a decision. It means like you're in. There's no way you're going back to the same old patterns again. You've decided to move in. I mean, like it's resolved within you. So it's all a matter of decision. You have to decide to stay resourceful. One of the best decisions, I would, I would, I would love to say that, one of the best decisions, <coughs> I'm sorry, one of the best decisions you can ever make is to decide to stay in a resourceful state no matter what. Is to commit no matter what, whether there's corona, I know it's going to be hard, and I know it sounds absurd, but that's what the successful people do. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it was hard for me. It was even hard for me. I mean, how can you stay happy? How can you stay excited when you're broke? But are you going to get rich feeling negative? That's the question. Right? Are you going to improve your life staying negative? I'm sure that doesn't help you in any way. So, so what I feel, this is just, so I mean, like, uh, uh, I've been through my tough times as well. I've been through my tough times as well. I've been through my tough times as well, and I realized that if you want to get ahead in life, you have to learn to do the things that are hard. This is what I've learned. You will move through, the, you will get ahead in life if you learn to discipline yourself to do the things that are hard. And the better you are at it, the more you get ahead in life, the more you'll be out of your comfort zone. Most people are, you know, uh, most people are trapped. They call it the golden cage. They call it, <laughs> they, they call it the golden cage. And it's like you're feeling so comfortable that you lose your hunger and you lose your passion. You lose your drive, you lose your hunger, you lose your passion. They call it the golden cage. So if you want to get ahead in life, then we have to get out of uh, you know, comfort and get into a discomfort. Make discomfort. Go into discomfort and stay excited. Go into discomfort. Go, go into the unknown territory and stay excited. Train yourself. Train yourself. Training yourself every day. This is what I know. The people who train themselves every day are prepared because I know that success is nothing but preparation plus opportunity. And those people who are training during these tough times, uh, yeah, they have a better chance of becoming more successful. So coming back to the topic once again. So yeah, it's the questions we ask ourselves. That is something very important, right? We have to be aware of the questions. And, and the moment you are becoming aware of the negative questions you're asking yourself, right? You have to stop it. You have to decide to stop it. Hey, I'm not doing this. I'm not good. Because the questions you ask yourself, you're, you're going to get an unconscious answer to that. And the unconscious answer will determine whether you stay resourceful, positive, or negative. So, this, so if, we, if you ask a quality question, we call it quality questions. How can I learn from this? What can I learn from this? It's the focus. So one more thing about the focus is the successful people. Am I, getting, oh, am I going too fast? It's wonderful. It's going uh -huh. awesome. I'm extremely, extremely happy. And people are extremely excited and they're posting a lot of comments it's going on tuck, 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 tuck. great <laughs> <laughs> i love it sir thank you so much yeah uh, so yeah mm -hmm. go ahead so, go just, ahead thank you sir thank you yes yeah, so just going on with the topic so one thing that i know the people who's going to be frustrated the people who's going to be depressed right now i understand the situation and the scenario but it's the it's the it's it's the mind who's focused on 
what you cannot do. It's the mind that focuses on what you cannot do. It's the mind that focuses on what you cannot control. You cannot control corona. You cannot control, I mean, like, if you're focused on those things, obviously, you will feel out of control. And that is the cause of frustration. And that is the uh, cause of negativity. That's the cause for negativity. That's the cause of frustration. So what we have, if you're focused on what I cannot do, the things that you cannot do anymore. I mean, I've seen uh, uh, people like, uh, you know, in, uh, 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 world-class leaders, both legs amputated, and they're still in inspiring millions of people. They're focused on, if they focus on, I've lost two legs and I cannot do these things. Now I used to do this, but I cannot do, now I'm like a slave, I'm dependent. If you focus on that, then you're obviously going to limit yourself. But if we start focusing on what can I still do? What is that I still have? What is that I can still do despite the situation? What is that I can still do? How can I use this with the right questions? How can I use this as an opportunity to uh, train myself to become better? I know I, it's, it's hard for everyone, but the one who uses, who decides to use the experience is gonna go ahead and move forward in life. That's, that's what I know. I mean, you have, we have to make the best lemonade out of it. We have to make the best lemonade out of it. So that's what I feel. So it's, it's the question. So what, we have to check the habitual focus, the habitual thinking. What are you thinking about? I mean, like, are you consistently focusing on things that you cannot do? Are you consistently on the focusings that you don't have, you can't control? If you are in that category, that's why you're feeling frustrated. But if you can focus on what is that I can still do? What is that I can still control? By asking yourself the right questions. I mean, it's gonna, how can I use this experience as an opportunity to empower and grow myself and take my life to the next level? What is that I can do? If we focus on that, I mean, I'm sure it's gonna pump us up and get ourselves excited <laughs> and take us to the next level. I, I think that's what's required, that's what's needed. So the, the first part is physiology, how you use the body, how you use the body, because your body, I mean, like, when you use your body differently, different chemicals are produced. See, if we, if we sit straight and smile, it produces different chemicals. It produces different chemicals, smile, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and so many other chemicals are being produced. But if we use our body in a different way, right? We slump our soldiers, and we, you know, if we sit like this, we produce a different set of chemicals. So it's not just simply, I mean, like what you're changing is the inner world. What you're changing is the inner world that is controlling your feelings. So it's important how we use our body. So the first thing is use your body differently. Smile a lot. That's what I say. Smile a lot. Stay happy. Stay excited. Let's nice. That's what I used to say. Let's nice. <laughs> and, and the other thing is ask the right questions. Ask the right set of questions. Ask the, I know. I know that we have faced Ebola. We have faced bird flu and so many, so many other, uh, uh, you know, there's pandemics. We have overcome so many other pandemic diseases. And right now, I mean, like we are facing COVID. So I mean, like it's gonna get over. This is also gonna get over. This is gonna also come to an end. So before it comes to an end, would you wanna turn this into an opportunity? Would you wanna go stronger? Would you wanna get stronger, right? And that depends on how we use ourselves. It's the inner, inner world. So how, what questions you ask yourself, how you use your body. And finally, I would love to say that it's the way how you talk to yourself, the way how you use your words, the way how you talk to yourself, the way how you use your words. That is something very important because words hypnotize us. And the, the tone you use and the words you use hypnotize the mind and the body and the emotions. So how do we talk to ourselves? That is also something very important. How do we talk to yourself? How do you talk to yourself? Do you talk to yourself like a best friend or do you talk to yourself like an enemy? How do you talk to yourself? Do you put yourself down or do you put yourself up? How do you talk to, what words do you use? And in what tonality, in what tone do you use it? That is something very important. That is something very important. That's what I would, uh, uh, you know, uh, want to say is how, how you use the tone, how you use the body, like the, what, what do you say to yourself, right? What do you say to yourself? So we have to check, we have to check the words we're using on ourselves. 
and also the words they were using to others as well. The words we're using to others as well, to ourselves and also to others as well. So we need to keep that in check because it actually hypnotizes us. So, I mean, like, that's why the successful people, they have like uh, impossible, it's not in my dictionary, right? Because I because, am possible. Yes, right. I sir. am <laughs> possible. Impossible, <laughs> I am possible. <laughs> exactly. That's right, sir. I am possible. So, I mean, like, it's the, it's so, they have this skill of, you know, using words in a very proper way because that actually dictates how we feel, that actually dictates our state of mind and body. So the words, how we, the, the words we say to ourselves and we say to others. So what I would love to say is, I mean, like, you have to make, we have to make a decision. We have, and this is not simply about saying the words. This is not simply about, you know, uh, using the body differently. This is not simply about, you know, thinking something, asking some questions. This is about getting ahead in life. This is about getting ahead in life. The core of this is to get ahead in life, empower ourselves, and get our life to the, I mean, to, 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 to achieve the goals, to reach the destinations we desire. This is about that. And the only person, I know the only person who can take us from where we are to the level where we want to be is us. <laughs> Right, and there's no one else. It's us, and there's no one else. So this is the reason. This is what I feel. This is the reason why we have to make a commitment to stay resourceful. We have to make a commitment to stay resourceful, and by 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 you know by following some of the strategies and techniques that I've mentioned a couple of minutes ago, using the body differently, asking the right questions, right. And, 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 and yeah, what do you say to yourself? How do you say to yourself? Do you talk to yourself like you're your best friend? So we need to keep this in check. But because we've been habituated with the old patterns and we think that's what we are and that's a problem there. But that's not who we truly are. We are so rocking. <laughs> so we, we, what we need to do is we need to retrain ourselves retrain ourselves and i do i do understand that habits cannot be destroyed it has to be replaced i do understand that the habits cannot be destroyed and it has to be replaced so what we need to do is find, find something more empowering find something more exciting that is much much more enjoyable compared to the old patterns that we are habituated i think that's what the solution is you have to make a commitment. You have to make a commitment. Hey, you have to write it down, make a commitment. And before everything else, and before everything else, what we need is the right reasons. We're going to go through some tough times trying to change our old habits, trying to change our old patterns. We're going to go through a very difficult and uncomfortable process. But what's going to make us go ahead is your right reasons. It's the strong reasons that's going to take us from where we are to where we want to be. That's what I truly believe. And so we have to be, it's not, it's, it's, it cannot be a very weak, you know, because I just want to do it. I want to change my habit because I just want to feel it. I, I want to change myself because I want to change my eating habits because uh, I think I look fat. That will not work. The reasons has to be very strong. I mean, like, it's like, it's, it has, you have got to be really serious about it. You have got to be really serious about it and you have to write it down. That's what we need to do. We have to write it down. You have to first decide, take the time, commit, commit to making the reasons, the right reasons. You got to have as much as reasons as you can. And yeah, the reasons will make you follow through during the tough times. That's what I believe. But here's what we need to do. And we need to apply it because we need to apply it. That's what's the most important part. The most important thing is we need to apply it. So are you happy where you are? The question is, are you happy where you are? Are you happy with your finance? Are you happy with how you're living your life? Are you living your dreams? Are you, is your quality of emotions in the right place? 
Are you enjoying life? Are you moving forward? I mean, are you living the life that you truly desire, that you really want to live, that you dream? Are you really living that? Or do you feel like there is something better? To all the people who's watching this amazing, empowering session, are you living the life that you dream? Are you living the life that you dream? Are you happy where you are? Are you finance, your career in the right place? If not, then this is the moment where you make the decision. No more. That's where you go. It goes with enough is enough. It starts with enough is enough. <laughs> when you do not, <laughs> right, sir. When you do not tolerate this anymore, when you do not tolerate this anymore, when you decide to completely change for something hundred times better, where you do not want to settle and go ahead for something that you truly believe that you deserve, the life that you deserve, the relationship that you deserve, the finance, whatever it is, this is the moment. Because as long as, as long as if you are used to it and if you keep accepting it, it's going to keep you there. So the first thing is decide enough is enough. You have to get up from your chair. You have to get up from your chair and you have to engage yourself because listening won't be enough. So this is some of the tips, right? Get up and engage your body. Get up and engage your body. And right, right. I know it's gonna look crazy, right? I know it's gonna look crazy. I know it's gonna look odd, but that's what it needs. That's what it needs to come out of comfort. You need a force. What we need is a force to lead us to the better life. And you have to demand that force from yourself. So if you're listening from a passive energy, from a lower level of energy, if you're listening to this, I know it is useful, but you want to do it, you want to make it, you know, we want to apply it in your life. You really want the bank account to grow up. You really want the career to grow up. So it's application. So here's what I would suggest the beautiful audience to do, get up from your chair and engage your physiology, use your body, get more energetic, get more excited, get yourself in a resourceful state, in a higher level of energy, and that's when you make a decision. When you're in the right state of mind, when you're in the right state of mind and body, boom, that's where you make a decision, right? So what, this is what I would suggest. And if you're sitting, right, if you're sitting passively, right, I want, I want you guys to sit up straight. Sit up straight, come on, let's do this. Sit up straight, get excited, get energetic, right? Get your energy up and boom, make that decision. Make that decision. Make that decision. Enough is enough. What is that you want to quit? What is that? Because yeah, I mean like I have my goals, I have my dreams. I want to get that. Just like that, I'm sure every one of you want to have that. So the first thing is, uh, yeah, get yourself in the right state. I'm just sharing what I know, what has helped me, what has worked for me, so that, you know, we, we all can grow together. So get yourself in the right state. Get yourself in the right state. It's by changing the body. Shake yourself. Move up. Get your body up. Just get yourself excited and make the commitment. Make a decision. Get a piece of paper and write it down. I am not going to settle for this. I'm not, I, I deserve this. And write it in present tense. And write it in present tense. Right in present tense, okay? Right? I know it sounds crazy, but that's what you need to do because the brain works in present tense. I am great. I am awesome, right? That's how the brain works. Not I'm going to be great. Not I'm going to be awesome, right? So make the decision. Make the decision. Take a piece of paper and write down, right, what you're going to stop doing and what you're going to start doing. And commit and commit to live in a resourceful state. And commit to live in the resourceful state by, you know, emotion comes from motion, by using your body differently, by engaging your body in a different way, by asking the right set of questions, the, the, like questions like, how, what can I learn from this, right? Questions like, uh, uh, what's great about this, right? How can I make it better? Questions like that. It's, it's getting habituated to these questions. And yes, and yes, the right words. 
the right words, right? Coupled with the right tonality, right? We can get ourselves from a lower state of energy to a higher state of energy, getting ourselves more resourceful, and yes, willing to and take the necessary actions. What's what I believe what's really lacking in the society right now is follow through. It's following through. It's getting it till the end. It's doing it till you have it. It's doing it till you get it done. I mean, that's what's lacking right now. So which one is hard? Making that hard decision or staying broke? Which one is hard? Which one is more harder? Is staying broke or is staying broke or making the hard decisions and doing it? Which one will be more harder for you? So I think it's obviously, you know, staying in the comfort zone and being broke. That's what I feel. And th this is what we do. And so we do a lot of training programs and we wanna make sure we bring out the beast, greatness, the potential in people. And we ask people in our training program, what we do is we ask them to do things like they've never done. Because I mean, like how much you expand depends on how much you stretch, how much you expand, how much you expand your potential depends on how much you stretch yourself, right? So, so that's what we do. So we have to constantly train ourselves, make a commitment, make a decision, train ourselves. And I believe this is because what's also really lacking in the market right now is quality people. Quality people. That's what's really lacking in the market right now and the right leaders. But everybody has that potential. Everyone has that potential. Everyone has it. Everyone has that potential. I truly believe in that. And what we need to do is just make the decision to bring it out. And it's the inner world, right? First, so there's this Stefan Arcove in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People and Stefan Arcove, he said that. He said that private <coughs> victory comes before public victory. Private victory comes before public victory. You have to master yourself and win yourself first so as to lead people, so as to lead people, to lead the society, to lead the nation into a better place. So what we need to do is we need to have a standard. We need to have a standard of what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, how we spend our time, what, what we want to, how we want to engage our time, what activities we want to engage ourselves into. We have to have a standard on those things. And I feel that is very important. I know, I know people know this stuff. But again, I repeat, what's lacking is action. What's lacking is action. And so what's really important it comes down to the reasons. It run, are you happy with the income? Are you happy with where you are? But it comes down to that. If not, you have to make the decision to come out of the uncomfort. That's what we need to do. So you have to get yourself in an active state because active state is going to help you take actions and follow through. So I'm repeating this again and again. Why? Because I want to make sure from this session, it, it really goes into your subconscious. It really, because repetition is what creates belief because repetition is what creates the belief. So I really want you to, you know, from, by watching this uh, uh, session, live session, it gets ingrained in your subconscious. That's what I'm doing. That's why I'm repeating it again and again. Because I really want you to get benefited out of this, get the benefit out of this. So th that, that's what I would say. So we need to have some standards, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, and that's, that's, that's what I feel. So that is thing called the state, the state, how, emotions, how, the way how we create emotions. Most people are victims of emotions. They have this uh, uh, statement. I have uh, heard this statement very oftenly, like, you know, like I cannot control my anger. And like, I'm born like this. I'm shy. I'm a very shy guy. It's like a victim mindset. It's a victimized mindset. It's a victimized mindset. And one of the most important breakthroughs, right, in psychology is 
uh, uh, that we do emotions, that we are the one who's creating emotions, that it's not happening to us, that we are actually doing it. You are doing frustration. You are doing uh, guilt. You are doing negativity. And you are doing positive. You are doing courage. You are doing determination. You are doing excitement. You are doing the sorry feeling. So many people in a, are in a sorry feeling mode right now. Pity part. Helpless. And we are actually doing that. And that is because of what's going on here. What's going on in the mind. So that 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 so we do emotions coming to the topic we do emotions right we're doing it if we actually shift the belief shift the mindset from it's happening is to we are act, we are doing it from it's actually happening us to we are actually doing it then we have the power we're in control we are in control now so instead of being a victim we are in control now so i feel i feel like you know, that, that, that is a very simple thing, but it's a very, very effective and powerful technique and a method and a mindset to transform and change our life. That we do emotions, that we create emotions. And the way to do is, like the three things I've stated, the way you use your body, the way you use your mind, and the way what you say and speak to yourself, right? This is what I want to say. And, and because it's really important uh, if to master emotions, if you want to be successful, or get it ahead of life. So this is one part which I want to uh, share to the uh, audience, right? And 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 if I talk about other things, just two more things, I, which I really want to add is, right? So what's what's making people weak? Yeah. If I, what's making people weak? What's making people depressed? Uh, you know, and. What's making someone feel that he or she is incapable? Incapable. I believe there's a mindset. There's a belief deep within us. I believe there are these two beliefs that no matter what, who he is, they have it inside. And the way how we skillfully handle those two beliefs is going to determine how we act, how we perform, how our life is going to be. And those two beliefs, I believe, these two beliefs are the main important reason whether somebody's a winner or someone is a loser. So those two beliefs is that I am not good enough. I am not good enough. They have this mindset. They have this thinking. They have this belief in themselves that they're not good enough. They're not worthy. That's why they're not stepping up. Until and unless you step up for yourself, Nobody else is going to step up for you. So I am not good enough, which is running in the minds of so many people, in the, in, in the minds and the bodies of so many people that, that, that I'm not good enough. Yeah. As I was doing my trainings for so many people, I come across this belief. As long as you have that, it's going to keep you feeble, weak, paralyzed, incapable and so we have to replace that belief in that mindset with i am more than enough that's where we need to go we need to replace that and when you the moment you say that i'm more than enough before i came out for this live session i told myself i'm more than enough i'm gonna rock this this is what i said to myself bring it on let's do this come on bring it on so I told myself, let's do this. I'm more than enough. I've got all the power in me. Let's do this. Bring it on. Let's rock the world. That's what I was, <laughs> that was, that was what I was thinking. I was believing. And that was what I was saying. Right? And it got me motivated. It got me excited. Oh my God. I am actually enjoying this session. Right now. If I was focusing on, oh my God. What, what I'm going to say. Thank you so much, sir. If, if, if I'm like, what am I going to say? Oh my God, so many people are going to see me right now. What if I fail? If I go in that mindset, because I have that thinking, but that belief that I'm not good enough. If I have that, I'm not good enough. I'm going to go negative. Now. But if I go, I'm more than enough. It might, it, it might seem arrogant, but it's not. It's actually really great. <laughs> it's actually really great. It's not arrogance. It's bringing out the potential within. 
So the two beliefs that I am not good enough and who will love me if I fail? Who will love me if I fail? These two beliefs are stopping people from taking actions. These two beliefs are stopping people from taking actions. And we have to change, right? I'm more than enough. We have to, when, we, when we get ourselves to that, I'm more than enough uh, in that mindset and train ourselves continuously, consistently, persistently in that mindset, I believe we're going to perform excellently, amazingly. And no matter what happens, we're going to have that power, the ability to utilize those experiences for our good, for our benefit, and share it to the world and make the world an amazing place to live. This is what I, this is what I want to share. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome. It was such a wonderful, you shared so much beautiful and uh, something, something amazing, uh, Mr. Uh, Kagemba. Uh, Thank it you, was sir. right from your heart. Now, let yeah. me ask the audience, because you spoke so much, you have a glass of water, if you're having next <laughs> to you. And yes, sir, I finding. would request now the audience, the people, those are watching us, when you see the program, who will become the millionaire? And that is in Hindi in India, with Amitabh Bachchan, Kaun Banega Karod Pati. The question over there also, the first question is 1,000 rupees. And this evening, I'm going to ask you one question. Whosoever gives the oh correct reply on the YouTube, after listening to him, what is the most important skill on this planet? Whosoever gives the correct answer first, you get 1,000 rupees right now. Wow. That's what, that's what I'm going to share with all of you. 1,000 rupees you get right now. If you can wow. tell me what exactly is most important on this planet, the most important skill on this planet. Come on, you can write it. Your time starts now. And by Come the on, time, guys. Yes, Let's go for it. Yes. By the time you write and whosoever gets first 1,000 rupees, I'm going to share something very interesting. When I was listening to him, I was remembering one of my mentors because when I teach abroad in Canada, in United States, in Europe, in Australia, in New Zealand, wherever I travel, wherever I go for two months in a year, that time, whatever I get the money over there, I become student thereafter and I join all motivational training programs, how to become a good mentor how to become a good, powerful speaker, whether it is Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins, or Jim Ron, or Les Brown, or Brian Tracy, or anybody on this planet. And in India, when you're talking about like Shiv Khera, you know, all those sessions when I talk about you can win, Jeet Aapki, there are a couple of programs which you go on. And you have got a lot of inspirational speaker, motivational speakers. And do you remember, uh, I do not want to name even that person. If you remember, uh, you know, Michael Jordan had an Indian coach. Okay, self-motivation, skill. What is that? Communication skill? No. Creativity? No. Attitude skills? No. Always positive? No. Uh, communication? No. Powerful mindset? No. Powerful insight? No. So, so far, keep trying, keep trying. Uh, <laughs> communication skill? No. Attitude skill? No. There's something else. I got to give you 1,000 rupees and you got to earn it. Because on. one, of, one of my motivational speakers always tells me, try and shoot for the moon. If you don't get the moon, at least you will still land among stars. Wow. You will still land among Beautiful. the stars. <laughs> there is no problem. Self-belief. No. There is something. If you use that particular word, because in between, when Mr. Kagemba was using, and you know, he was very smart. He has used five, six, uh, you know, synonyms for one word. And he gave it tuck, 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 tuck. So I'm giving you the question paper is very easy. You get 1000 rupees. Time management, no. Self belief, no. Target, no. Balance of mind, no. There's something, there's something, the most important skill. And if you have not understood by this time also when he spoke, good about uh, one hour and three minutes, because I took initially 12 minutes. So, I think aim high, no. 
Khabib, no. Communication skill, no. Great session going on. Yes, I know. Vidhi ji, thank you very much. You're joining. Vidhi ji is also a master trainer. She handled more than 10,000 youth at one place. Great. Thank you. Public speaking, no. Empathy, no. Positive mindset, no. Okay. Now, something very interesting. He mentioned 4,000 emotions and how many of type of emotions you're carrying in your life. I've just released the question paper for you. And secondly, ladies and gentlemen, every day, almost 60,000 thoughts cross your mind in one day, between 50 to 60,000. And by almighty, by nature, most of them, they are designed to be negative. You got to put in conscious efforts to make them positive. That is something very, very important because I've attended so many sessions. I've done more than 40 webinars as a student, wow. humble student, basically on NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. If you want to become a master trainer in your life, you must do a program, basic program of Neuro Linguistic Programming, middle program, advanced program. Then you will understand. you got to understand the mind. Okay. Who is writing 12 emotions? No. Public sp speaking? No. Belief? No. Come out from the comfort zone? No. Management skill? No. Selling skill? No. Confidence? No. <laughs> Selling skill? No. Positive mindset? No. Somebody, there is a small word. Okay. I think I got to give you the clue now. Or if you want to keep trying, keep trying. I can hang on because I'm going to ask three questions to Mr. Khagimbaji. Uh, which is next to my heart. I would like that he should devote one minute each on. What did he learn the best from TCS? What did he learn the best from Urban Clap? And what exactly is the main objective of uh, when he has got a startup now, when he is having a promise, and when he's talking about performance training, what is the main objective in that which has to be taken care of? Okay, I want to remove your curiosity. Let me just give you the answer because otherwise you'll keep hanging over there only. Let me just give you the answer. It is no more communication. It is no more communication. 10 years back, the most important skill, we used to call it communication. But now the latest skill, you must watch a program. There are more than 4,000 videos available of a person who is the best communicator of the world. His name is called Nido Cuban. When you watch Nido Cuban, he's a Libyan. He went with $5 to America. When I met him in United States, he's a chancellor of one of the prestigious universities at this point of time. The latest and the most important skill in this universe is, it is not communication, it is connecting. It is connecting because you communicate at home, you communicate in market, you communicate in classroom, you communicate on webinar. How many people get connected with you? And when you say connected, I'm not talking about Zoom connection. I'm talking connecting heart to heart, connecting soul to soul, connecting mind to mind, connecting emotion to emotion. The most important skill on this planet, we have moved one stage ahead of communication, it is called connecting. He got connected with all of us. Whatever he was talking, he got connected. Connected and that's why you enjoy it. And that's why so many posts coming over here. Because he got connected with you. And you felt, hey, what he's saying, that's basically is for me. It's happening to me. It's going on inside me. It's I'm, oh, how does, how does Mr. Kagemba knows What's happening inside me? Oh my God, is he a musician? Is he an astrologer? Does he know the future? Does he read the mind? It was basically because he was getting connected. And right. when you get connected with somebody, Ooh. everything gets covered in that particular thing. And there again, he used my mentor, something very interesting. When I listened to Les Brown, they are twin brothers. And they are once again, and you know, when he was eight weeks old and both the brothers were abandoned, he doesn't know who are his parents. He has got more than 5,000 
more than 5,000 motivational talks on the YouTube, TED Talks, you can see. And he is one of the most outstanding speaker on this planet today. And when you listen to him, when you attend his session, I participated. I was the lonesome person from India who was shortlisted. Finally, my video was selected over there. That's a different thing. I could not get the global prize, but I got a certification from him that from India, you have been selected uh, Major Dr. Gulshan Sharma. I'm proud. It's a proud moment for me. And it's a humble beginning. We all are learning and never stop learning. Today, we learned so many things, so many things from Mr. Kagemba. He gave so many valuable inputs. And as a good student, I took all the notes. And you know how he started? Initially, when he was talking, how many children must have been unemployed at this point of time? My guess, approximately 10 lakh people, something like that he was talking about. Now, let's presume an entire Northeast. Let's presume entire India. So where are we? Are we really heading in the right direction? The education, what we are taking today, is it making us to become skillful? And is education and skill enough to make me competent to co compete locally, regionally, nationally, continent-wise, and internationally? Does it make me competent? Because no education is complete, no skill is complete, unless it gives me employment or entrepreneurship. And I think there should be 100% accountability today in an education ecosystem that, hey, you're charging such a fee. You're giving me this program. Are you, making, are you making me employable? Or are you going to give me a job? Or are you really creating an entrepreneurship for me? Am I really going to become a startup? Are you going to do my handholding? I would like to make from this webinar a very humble request to Government of India, Ministry of Education. Stop giving grant just on the namesake that this is a big university, this is a big college, this is at a prestigious location, this is an urban area, they need a handholding. No handholding. Either you perform or you perish. And if you don't perform, why you should get a grant? You should not get a grant. What are we doing with our youth? How, how are we chiseling them? How are we sharpening them? How are we developing them? There is something very important which I wish to share with all of you. You know, the Honorable Finance Minister the other day, she announced, and I'm proud to share with all of you today in this webinar, when she announced the other day, here is the slide for all of you. You should see that on 1st of February, the Honorable Finance Minister of India, Nirmala Sita Ramanji, she announced that we are going to set up 100 scenic schools in India after the budget being announced on 1st of February 2021. And can you see our commitment of our chamber? 1st February, the budget was announced. 2nd February, we started the campaign. We organized 31 webinars. Army, Navy, Air Force, civilians, everybody together, all the principals, all the stakeholders of the scenic schools. What kind of a hundred scenic schools should come up? Why not we should have more scenic schools coming up in northeast part of India, in the interiors? And I'm proud to share today with all of you that Mizoram is the first state in India where from the six girls joined the first scenic school as a girl wow. child. I just wish to share with all of you, anything, wow. anything is possible if you are commitment. It's your commitment. That is something very important. Right. Now, right. there's a friend of mine, uh, there's a friend of mine in America, Tim Grover. And watch, watch his videos. When you watch Tim Grover, Tim Grover, coach for Michael Jordan. And you know what he says? He says, the kind of time energy, sweat, you put on your body in the gym. If 1% of that, you put on your brain, you put on your mind, you can do wonders on this particular planet. What is the use of just making your muscles? Why don't you make and, and something very nice? He made a mention today. I'm so very happy when he told emotion is like a muscle. I took a note of that and he told the more you practice, practice and practice, you're going to turn that into a reality wherever you want. So ladies and gentlemen, emotions are very important in life. When I got my first uniform, I got my first rank, I got my first salary, I got my first girlfriend, 
that emotion i cannot forget but emotion emotion is giving you a kick to do better to perform better i can give you i can give you in writing uh mr kagemba to impress his girlfriend he'll improve his english he'll improve his muscles he'll improve his attire he'll improve his dress sense he'll he will improve his personality the girl to whom i wanted to marry i improved everything in my life just because of her having a girlfriend is very important if you want to improve your personality let me tell you anybody who gives you this opinion no 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 don't have they are stupid those are telling you don't have a girlfriend you must have a girlfriend because then you will improve then you will improve i improved my english language i come from a village i come from a rural rustic interior a third class 11th standard student but you improve when she tells you hey where are you what's your what's your he used the word grit right. he used the word grit and when you listen and when you watch the youtube angela dick angela dick videos you will come to know what exactly is grit and colonel manan one of my brother officer based out of bangalore he has read all the books on grit of angela dick and i always laugh for him that next birth you are going to meet angela dick this this birth she has already got married beautifully happily married and she is settled next birth you meet like next birth i am going to be born in northeast part of india i love <laughs> northeast so much because i started my career my uniform my salary my everything what i am today it's because of northeast i got to repay back to northeast that's wow. what i always look forward to now i would request you kindly spare a minute for tcs tata consultancy service what did you pick up the best from there and then we will go to your urban clap what did you pick up from there and then we will come to your present uh, you know the a promise a, right. a minute on each let's devote a minute right sir thank you so much yeah. uh so sir what i learned from tcs is i mean like yeah like what, what you said sir i mean relationship it is very important the ability to uh form meaningful connections with the people around you i learned that that is very important for you to climb up the ladder uh i mean that's that's uh that's what i really learned i really learned how to you know have be a be a very good team leader uh yeah i mean like team member sorry how to be a very good team member i learned from there and it's better to have very good relationship with the people around you develop meaningful connections strong rapport and i mean like i was from north east and i was there in chennai so if you, if you if you want to i mean like the people of chennai are very good very generous i love them i like them right and like so so what i learned is learn to have you know learn to develop very good relationship with people i mean that's that's what i i learned the network how to have how to form strong network that's what i learned from tcs and it's a very big organization it's a very huge and so many people are there and uh, yeah so that's what i learned that's what i picked up then come let's come to the second one uh, urban clap yeah from urban urban clap what i really learned was hard work and grit it was a startup company it was a startup company and it's startup i mean like you have to be there 24 by 7 have to dedicate i mean it's a it's it's in the budding phase and it's like you know so you have to really push yourself and i was working like 12 13 hours a day and it was hard but but you have to i mean like do whatever it takes so i learned grit commitment responsibility uh you know go the extra mile I learned this attitude this behavior more while I was in urban club than in TCS. So, yeah, that's what I learned. So, yeah, it was a really good experience. It taught me a lot of things that if you really want to succeed, you you have to really commit. That's what I really learned from, wow. from urban club. Yeah. Great. Let's come to Thank A you, promise. Yes. So, A promise, I mean like it's a whole package. 
And uh, what I really learned from Ephraim is like, I mean, you, you, I mean, like, I, we, we started this with my brother. Me along with my brother, we started this. I'm a twin. He's in Bangalore uh, right now. And uh, what I, I mean, like, it's about leadership initiatives and making it happen. I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was, I mean, if you want it, success is your duty. And if you want it, you have to make it happen. I mean, you have to burn your boat. You have to really commit to it. You have to really pay the price uh, for what you really want. You have to really pay the price for what you really want. You have to really commit to it. And I mean, if it, if it, if it has to happen, it's up to you. This is, this is what I'm learning. So many people are, you know, giving excuses, but a promise was not like this. When I started, nobody knew me. Now people are getting to know me, right? People are getting to know me a little bit more. I'm so humbled for that. But it was not like that when I started. People used to make fun of me, crack jokes on me, right? And I still consistency, you know, with persistence, go out on Facebook and keep doing, keep doing. Like I didn't have a name. Like there was no A Promise brand. Nobody knew me. It's like, who's this clown coming out here and talking as if he knows everything? <laughs> it was like that. But then, yeah, you keep, keep doing what you're doing. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Keep doing what you're doing. And I, I feel like, you know, believing in yourself. This is what, one thing I've, what I've really learned from A Promise as well. It's like, if it, is ha if it has to happen, it's up to you. That, you know, that, that, that's what, it's, it's in your conviction. How it's in your, it's in your level of conviction. Uh, that's how things happen. This, thank you, sir. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. You know, mm. uh, that shows mm. me there are different kind of people. There are some people, mm. they watch mm -hmm. what's happening. Mm -hmm. There are certain yeah. people, they watch what happened. Mm -hmm. And there are certain people, they say, mm -hmm. how it happened. How it right. happened. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. So, so uh -huh. the thing is, uh, mm. when when you go for a walk, when you go mm. for a walk, my another mentor mm. tells me always, mm. when you go for a walk with someone, mm. Mm -hmm. either you adjust to their pace right, or right, they right. adjust to your pace. Right, 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 whose, right, right, right. Whose pace have you adjusted to? Right, right. And sir, I'm sure you have. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you have gone through the book "Sell or Be Sold" by Grant Cardone, where he says, "Yes, yes. that's what." Thank you. Yeah. And uh, my heartiest congratulation, I learned from Ishita Shukla that recently a 17-year-old youth from Manipur has cleared the National Defense Academy. Woo! Proud of that. Yes, the 17-year-old boy. And uh, that is something wonderful. And my friend who always talks about great Colonel Bannon, he has also served Manipur. That's something is very nice. And uh, it is uh, Shagol Sam uh, in our B, in our B, Ishita, there are 15 candidates who cleared NDA. He was one among of them. Wow, that's very good. He wow, was one among them. Great, great. great. Mm -hmm. That's something mm -hmm. is lovely, lovely. Mm -hmm. Pleasure mm -hmm. to hear that. Pleasure to hear mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then let's come on to, let's come on to what exactly is there. There are something, one question, uh, there any negative impact to realize? Okay, we will talk about that again. Now, let's come on to the positivity once again, ladies and gentlemen. Something very rightly he said, come whatever may. There are certain things within your control and there are certain things beyond your control. If the light goes off right now, it's not within my control. If this Zoom session, internet goes down right now, it's beyond me. I should not get upset, perturbed and lose right. my cool and start. No, that's not correct. Right. There's, something, there's something very interesting. You know, when you sit inside the aircraft, you must have, must have noticed it's always good to watch people. How do they behave? How do they behave? When you sit inside the aircraft and the taxing has started, the aircraft has rolled in. It has come to the runway edge. And it is about to take off. And that right. time, the captain of the aircraft gets a message from the air traffic control. There is a very heavy wind blowing. You cannot take off right now. 
we cannot afford to take a risk you wait for 10 minutes there only and the captain makes an announcement or air hostess the chief pulse person she makes an announcement and then some of the people start yelling shouting and they start telling what is this you are never in time oh you know i have got my appointment and i have to reach over there they don't understand it is beyond captain it is beyond the flight chief purser and it is beyond that so ladies and gentlemen whatever within our control let's do the best possible way and whatever is beyond us don't lose your cool always remain happy and what uh, you know mr kagimba told that uh, if you really want to enjoy your life then always laugh over because it's not going to happen the way you want it it's going to happen the way he wants it the chair on which i am sitting he told many a times get up from the chair get up from the chair to everybody the chair on which i am sitting there are many those who have come and they sat on this before me and there are many who will sit after this you got to see what are you performing when you are sitting on this chair that is something very important so there are great messages and he had been very very positive very promising we pray to almighty we wish him all the great grand success whatever he and his twin brother they are doing the other one is bangalore so both of them keep taking a uh, northeast ahead i want every child from northeast should be as committed as responsible as happy as passionate to learn and perform as mr kagemba is i'm so very wow. happy I'm wow. so very happy. I'm so <laughs> wow. very happy. I'm so very happy because you know it it was full of full of commitment, full of emotion, full of passion, full of enthusiasm, full of positivity, full of I'm saying you charged everybody and always remember uh it is no more communication, it is connecting. It is connecting wow. with each other. If we get connected, we will enjoy in future. If we just communicate with each other we we were not going to work with each other you know you got to get connected so ladies right. and gentlemen with these words my deep gratitudes and thanks and regards and blessings and all the best wishes to mr kagemba and his brother and his entire team keep doing well keep doing good job whatever you are doing and very special thanks to uh, mr uh, you know the madam uh, julie suba who has basically connected this evening and she is the instrumental to bring you on this board and on this particular program i'm pretty sure together we are going to do lots of programs in future together to empower educator and to empower youth you should become the brand ambassador for empowering northeast children and northeast youth thank you right. thank you very much god bless you stay fit stay fine stay healthy so green morning green afternoon green